Father, we thank you tonight for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies toward us and for allowing us to be postured in this now moment. We ask, kind God, in Jesus' name, that you will speak your heart and your mind to us. Our hearts and our ears are open. Spirits open, God, to receive what you'll say to us. I pray tonight, Father, that through your word, someone will be lifted from the place that they have been and moved into the place, Father, that you're bidding and purposing them to come. Through your word tonight, save, heal, deliver, set free. Give someone clarity in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you tonight, God, for the miracles, the signs and wonders that we shall receive in this place. As your vessel, I stand completely open in you. It, say and do that father which is your heart and your mind toward us will you receive your word with great joy and give only your name glory honor and praise in jesus name clap your hands one more time everybody hallelujah if you'll stand with me for just a few moments we honor the lord for uh, this privilege and opportunity to serve the people of god on tonight i was sharing with the apostle earlier i am not a total stranger to bible way um, I spent time serving um, in Raleigh, North Carolina under the leadership of Apostle Darnell Dixon. And during that time, I was privileged to serve the music ministry of the National Church. And I honor God that he's allowed me to come back to serve tonight in this capacity. Will you clap your hands and help me to celebrate and to honor the Lord for our chief apostle tonight? Pastor Roca, I honor you, sir tonight come on continue to clap your hands as we honor the lord for his lovely wife on this evening i celebrate you tonight lady rooker in the name of the lord keep clapping come on y'all let's celebrate our first vice presiding apostle greaves i honor you sir amen and to lady greaves i honor you tonight as well keep clapping come on y'all this is honor let's do it let's celebrate the lord for apostle heron i honor you sir and Lady Heron on tonight and to the executive board of bishops, amen. Our general secretary, Bishop Williams, amen. All of those who are serving, amen, in leadership. And I especially want to honor the Lord for Bishop Bonnie Hunter. She's representing the women of God so well. I honor you tonight, Bishop. Amen. I celebrate all of you in the name of the Lord and to all of the bishops and pastors, everybody in your places. I thank God for you. Will you get your Bibles? Let's go to Luke chapter 5. Amen. I thank God I have some of my family in the room. Uh, my natural family, my church family is here and I celebrate the Lord for them and I thank God. I saw my godmother in the building tonight. Evangelist Faye Dupree, I love you so much. Amen. And I thank God for your presence and all who are here. If you'll meet me in Luke 5, I'm going to hasten to my assignment tonight. And if y'all will help me, I'll preach. And if you don't, I'll still preach. It's quite all right. <laughs> hey, I feel God. I'm sorry. If I start screaming, y'all excuse me. This is how me and God get down. Hallelujah. Every now and again, I get excited in Jesus and um, I lose myself. But I promise you, I'll be all right. Luke 5, I want to begin our reading tonight in verse number 9. Um, really, I could just do the latter clause of 10, but I'll start in 9 for context, and then we will land in Acts chapter 2. But we'll read in your hearing out of Luke 5. If you're there, just let me know that you're there by saying, I got the word. Amen. I like a talk back church. Verse 9 reads, For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, here it is, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had bought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him you can be seated in the presence of the lord as an overall thought i want to uh, deal with this power of an encounter but i specifically want to leave um, in your hearing tonight and i want you to share this thought with someone to your left or right side tell them neighbor the promise shall be fulfilled Find somebody sitting somewhere else in your section and I need you to pick up your Holy Ghost strength. Put it in your voice and say, neighbor, preacher told me to tell you that the promise shall be fulfilled. If you believe it, clap your hands like you know it's on the way. So 
as we would consider our brief conversation on tonight, we understand and by this time should know that there indeed it's something about having an encounter with God. I want us to consider tonight that it is in the uh, opportunity to encounter God that we, that we become aware of who we are and what it is that he has purposed our lives to do. It is through encounters that we gain strength, we gain strategy, we gain wisdom, and we receive a burden for that which we are called to carry out and accomplish not for our namesake, not for our fame, not for our glory, but simply to and for the glory of God. I want to submit to you tonight that if you ever have an encounter with God, it is an encounter with God that will change, that will, that will shift, that will transform your life. And in, in transforming your life, there comes now a transformation or a shifting of your focus, your desires, your appetite, your responses. You're transformed. Your mind is transformed. Your heart is transformed whenever it is that you have an encounter with God when we consider uh, simply by definition an encounter speaks to an unexpected or sometimes casual meeting between persons it can uh, happen face to face it can it can happen in this age virtually but it gives us the opportunity uh, to come together one with another to to either meet or to have a moment of confrontation when we uh, consider encounter then as it relates to as it relates to the scripture and it relates to God then it speaks to coming into a relationship coming face to face with God having the opportunity to be in his presence and then the knowledge to recognize that you're in his presence if you were to permit LB that's who I am to tell you what an encounter is to me I would tell you that an encounter is an undeniable life defining moment and time that is spent now in the presence of God stay with me I'm coming so then we consider then as we uh, approach our text on tonight that there is a, a man by the name of Simon Peter who on occasion after now doing that which is his that which is his natural job this man scripture reveals to us is nothing more than a fisherman if it were to be uh, according to custom or or to the culture he only qualified stay with me to be now a fisherman so here it is we have a man who has mastered his craft who on the occasion that we would approach our text tonight is uh, returning from what I consider to be a failed voyage the Bible said uh, that Peter now is returning from a night of fishing with empty nets and though those nets are empty what I can uh, respect about him even where I stand is that though his nets were empty uh, he began to prepare them for the next time that he that he now would take to the water can I pause here and say to somebody I understand and know that what you set out to do in the last season may not have worked but I don't need you to hang up your nets as if to suggest that this thing is over I need you to take now a page from Peter's book and begin to now prepare your nets Bible reveals to us that Peter is now at the shore side the seaside and he is washing his nets when the encounter of a lifetime is initiated Bible said that now Jesus happens to come and when he comes he comes with a simple question Question, Simon Peter, may I use your vessel? Can I can I can I stand on your boat? Will you will you pull away from shore? Because I have 
an assignment. The Bible shows us that it is that it is Peter who is now in the middle of an encounter with God who is getting ready to see everything about his life take a turn for the better. The Bible said how drive quickly that now Peter begins to respond and he lends to Christ that which belongs to him. As a result now of him lending the father his possession we see then Jesus begin to further engage him to the point that he gives an instruction that says I want you to launch out into the deep and I want you to drop your nets again it is Peter who may not understand all the details of the moment but I'm glad that this fisherman was wise enough that he took a chance on this man Jesus Christ Bible said that now Peter launches out and as a result of this we meet him now in verse number nine he's launched out he's dropped his nets and just as Jesus has relayed to him he catches so many fish that his nets now begin breaking and the Bible reveals to us in verse number nine of the text that as a result of this Peter is left completely astonished he is he is blown away by what it is that he just saw but this is what I love in the text Bishop Tally the Lord Jesus Christ does not allow Peter to be paralyzed by this moment because this moment was simply to grasp his attention to get him into the place that God wants him to be I'm a work I promise and and so then when we now consider what Peter has just experienced we find him getting off of his boat now posturing himself if I may in a time of worship doing which he relays to Jesus I'm not good enough to have anything to do with you but I love the response of Jesus Christ Jesus begins now to release information to Peter he begins to release a promise to Peter God I love you he begins now to say to Peter I don't want you to fear I don't want you to get lost in what you just saw because if you'll follow me you're going to see this again bookmark it I'm coming back he begins now to engage Peter in such a way that he leaves if I may a promise on Peter's life he begins now to say to Peter that if you will follow me I God will make you now a fisher of men this is this is now encounter in progress Bible shows us that it is Jesus who begins to release a declaration over Peter's life that Peter has nothing to do with except he will be open and be yielded except that he will be postured yes Lord to receive that now which is promised I want us to consider that as we look tonight in our text this manner of promise this manner of promise speaks to a gift that is graciously bestowed on him that he does not have to pledge or negotiate anything for can I find out tonight if there's anybody in the sanctuary or the virtual church who can throw your hands up and say there are some promises that God has made me that I did not have to negotiate for he did it because he's God he did it because he's gracious and and because he knows yes Lord the thoughts and the plans that he think towards me he made me a promise because he knew now my end from the beginning so here it is this is where we'll begin to drive Peter now has received this promise from God this pledge from Jesus Christ and once Jesus now has released his word over Peter's life I want to submit to you my first observation of the night that the word that Peter receives is introducing him to his potential 
now. God, I love you. It's it's it's, it's introducing him to, to to the capacity to to what it is that he can become, to to what it is that he's going to develop into into the future. Yeah, you must understand that Peter is not made aware of his potential. I'll make you a fisher of men until after yeah, the miracle now has been revealed between verses 1 and 6. He is not now, yes Lord, made aware of this potential until he has brought himself into the right place and the right posture which is yielded, yes, at the feet now of Jesus Christ. And so as we consider then that Peter has become aware of his potential, we now must follow this journey because there is a promise that shall be fulfilled. We follow him now as it is that God begins to move him, prophet Frazier, from promise into process. God, I love you. You got to understand and know that while it is that you might be packed with potential, unprocessed potential is dangerous. All right, never mind. I'm going to say it again for the people way in the back who holler back at your girl. I said you can be full of potential, but potential that has not been processed can be extremely dangerous. Well, Pastor, girl, how do you figure? Well, when we then look at this man, Peter, the one who has a promise from God over his life, when we look at this Peter, one who is who is full of potential and has in God, yes, he has in God a purpose. Peter is also a man who needs to be processed because in Peter's life he's got a whole lot of problems. He has, he has, he has problems, and I, I want to submit to you tonight that the problems that we'll begin to see on the other side of the promise in Peter's life deal with insecurity and arrogance. And most people only know that Peter was a hothead. Most people only know that Peter loved to cuss, cut, and fight. But I want to suggest to you that everybody that's quick and strong in their answer really don't show up to throw hands. Might I suggest to you tonight that sometimes the loudest one in the room just might be the most insecure one in the room, but they've learned how to hide that insecurity in arrogance. I'll deal with it on a whole another day. We have in this hour a lot of people who they have a problem in their life and the problem is that they're dealing with with the arrogance of insecurity. Baby, if you're scared, just say you're scared. Don't go around hollering everybody's hating on you. You don't know enough people to hate on you. I need us to come up out of this, yes? This arrogant and prideful mindset that we think that everybody wants to see us fail, that everybody wants to see us go under. When you really understand what has been released over your life, you don't even care about people people's opinion anyway because you understand scripture and bible said that he which has begun this good work now when you it is he yes and it is he alone who shall who shall now perform it until the day of jesus christ peter y'all be seated please i'm gonna drive as fast as i can all right but peter i want to suggest to you has a problem with insecurity and arrogance so we'll begin to see this as we follow him as he is now postured in discipleship with Jesus the Christ. It is this Peter, yes Lord, that Jesus now has to speak to on several occasions to make him aware of his insecurity and his arrogance. We'll begin to see it when we look now, yes Lord, in Matthew 20. And Mark 14. It is now Jesus who's having conversation with Peter that begins to address both his arrogance and insecurity. We'll find it in John 13. Yes, we find it in Luke 22, 31, and 32. That Jesus is having now, before Peter can come into 
to the promise. He's having to deal with the man's problems. This Peter is the one now who oftentimes would speak without considering the weight of his words. Don't y'all remember that it was Jesus who told Peter, listen, when I get ready to be taken, yes, and when I am postured to submit to the cross, Peter, you're making a lot of noise. I'm going to paraphrase it, but I'm Bible. Yeah. Jesus begins to speak to his disciples uh, and he says to them that once I am taken uh, a spirit of confusion is going to come. Uh, but it was that loud mouth Peter, yes, uh, who began talking back to Jesus saying, listen Jay, uh, I don't know what my brothers are going to do, uh, but I promise you I'm not going to fall. Uh, I don't know what my brothers are going to do. I don't know uh, what kind of issues, how uh, they're going to our separation but I'm Peter and I don't plan to leave you Peter begins to talk so much Bishop Jackson that Jesus has to drop the knowledge on him to reveal to him Peter you are the very one that now yes Lord before the cock can even crow you're going to deny me three times now ain't it something that this man Peter yeah, finds himself before it's all over yeah, standing now in the words that Jesus spoke to him yeah. the Bible reveals to us uh, that once Jesus has been taken mm, uh, Peter now is in proximity and uh, when he is realized when he has been spotted uh, and they begin to call him out aren't you one of his uh, it is Peter who begins uh, to vehemently deny uh, his knowledge of Christ the question on the floor uh, is girl why in the world would Jesus uh, allow Peter to have such an encounter uh, could it be that Jesus uh, was trying to break Peter uh, out of his arrogance and his insecurity uh, could it be that Jesus yes uh, before he could trust him to handle the promise uh, he has now to make sure that Peter uh, is properly postured in heart and mind so we see Peter having to address having to address the problems in his life we even see it so much so that in Luke 22 it is Jesus who is speaking to Peter and says to him Simon Simon I want you to say on your toes that's how the message Bible said it because Satan does not just want to have you but he wants to have all of you and separate you from me it's interesting that this is Jesus the one who knows all things who is revealing to the one who recognizes his deity as the Christ it's interesting that Jesus is having this conversation with one that he has already declared upon this rock I'm going now to build my church but yet and still it is Jesus who's saying to Simon that Satan desires to have you it's in this moment I believe that Jesus is introducing Simon yes to a season of preparation he says to him Satan's coming after you but he's not coming after you because you're Peter he's coming after you to get you away from me but listen to what Jesus says he says but know this that I have prayed for you that when you are converted you can strengthen now your brother the question on the floor becomes why would Jesus not interrupt the plan of the enemy I want to suggest that Jesus knows that I can't trust Peter with promise unless I can trust him with pain I can't trust Peter with promise unless I can trust him God to endure this hardship like a good soldier it is Jesus who could have prevented here it is the failure that Peter now is about to endure did she say he failed yes I did how do you figure he failed well when we look at the word failed it speaks to a lack of success and I want to suggest to us that when Peter failed he did not fail his Christ he fell into what God had said would be Peter's failure was not about him disappointing Jesus but Peter's failure was about disappointing himself and what the people would think about 
about it. Let me pause here and help us tonight. Many of us need to understand that much like Peter, yes, God, we've got to go through seasons that it looks like to people we are lacking success. Why must we go through it, preacher, pastor? Because it is in that that we're able to grow. It is in that that we come to a place that we learn how to trust in God more than we trust in ourselves. So here it is. Yes, Lord. I believe that just as Peter was, many of us deal with this insecurity and arrogance because we don't want to fail. Yes, God. We don't want to look like we're lacking progress. Not because we're afraid of disappointing him but you're worried about people who have no say over what God has begun and ordained for your life might I suggest to the church that we're coming into an hour that we've got to grow to the place that while I don't set out to fail if I fail I ain't worried about those who come to speak any manner of evil against me I must come to know and understand that in times that I fall and come short his glory God is getting ready to teach me how to humble myself where is the humility in failure well if I know Bible Bible said that when someone is overtaken those who are spiritual are to restore the fallen one and I want to suggest that there are some people who have yet to be restored because you're too prideful and arrogant you're too insecure care and worried about them to go to those who have the maturity and have the ability to help you get back in your place it is Peter y'all be seated I'm moving as fast as I can but it is Peter who not only fails God I love you this failure was necessary don't touch your neighbor touch yourself and say self forgive yourself that failure was necessary how do I figure it was necessary well if I were to ask David to testify he would stand and tell you that it was good for me that I had been afflicted for it was in my affliction my failure it was in my weakness my embarrassment that I learned now the statutes the precepts the concepts now of God so we have a Peter who is in yes he's in process dealing with problems and not only do we see Peter fail but we see Peter falter what is the fault how does he falter well when I look in essence at the word falter it speaks to losing strength or momentum it speaks to lacking now courage less Lord it speaks to becoming weak so Peter now because because he's in this process that has really come to break him of his arrogance and insecurity he begins now to fall back on who it is that he has the potential to be. I am glad tonight that though this man has failed and faltered failure and faltering were not final. This is where I need you to touch somebody on your left or right side and say hey neighbor you may know about my failures and you may see me falter. Tell them but please know this. This ain't final after I fail and falter God's gonna bring me into a place called recovery after you see me embarrassed after you watch me cry and still enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart after you heard the rumors and the noise you're going to watch me now come into his presence and pay down the vow that I owe because I know that this, this place in my life is not final. I need everybody that's in the room tonight that's ever gone through failures. I need every man, every woman that's ever experienced a season that you faltered to clap your hands and open your mouth. I need you to begin to give God a shout right here because even as I speak unto you now, God is shifting you out of your failures. He's shifting you out of the place that you faltered he's getting ready to move you into recovery if you believe it clap your hands open up your mouth and give God a shout shout for your recovery
covering my God and the room is quiet my God of mercy I said clap your hands open your mouth and shout for a season called recovery I'm coming I'm coming we got a ways I'm coming so Peter y'all be seated please he's failed he's faltered but but Jesus has because there's a promise that's got to Bishop Williams be fulfilled. Jesus has provided for his recovery. Where, girl, his recovery in the text? Well, when you look uh, in John 21, and Lord Jesus, after it is that Jesus now has been risen from the dead, he's standing on, on the seaside at the Sea of Galilee, Peter and his boys out on the water fishing. And the uh, Bible reveals to us that once they come into a knowledge that it is Christ uh, who is speaking to them from the side of the shore, mm-hmm. Peter makes haste to get to Jesus. Can I tell somebody you can't recover without getting to Jesus? Lord have mercy. God I love you. He makes his way in a hurry to Jesus and when he gets there they're having if I may a seaside fish fry. Jesus now sits Peter down. Gibson he begins to ask him one question. I'm introducing you to his recovery. Peter do you love me? Peter responds Jay you know I do. Jesus then says to him if you love me you will feed my lambs. Yet and still again Jesus asked the same question. Bishop Body a second time. Peter do you love me? Peter answers Jesus you know I love you. Jesus then says again if you love me you'll feed my lamb. It's recovery. He asked this man yet a third time Peter do you love me? Yes. And now Jesus after hearing Peter's response says that if you love me you'll feed my lambs preacher pastor how do you figure this is recovery well number one you gotta understand they're in one on one conversation looks like a moment of encounter and I started by telling you that when you have an encounter with God it comes to shift Lord have mercy it comes to shift everything in your life he's sitting here now having an encounter with his Christ that brings him to a place that he can be strengthened in the place that he had faltered where girl did he falter did not Jesus say to him in Luke 22 Peter my prayer for you is that your faith fails you not I want to suggest that the man begin to fail he begin to falter in his faith but Jesus in this moment of recovery is giving him the opportunity for his faith to be built up and restored how do you figure well Jesus asked him three times the same question the first thing I'll submit to you tonight is that he asked the question three times because he's about to settle Peter into this assignment not only does he want to settle him in but he asked the question not because he is hard of hearing but he needs Peter to be convinced of what his potential now is so he has the question three times to give Peter opportunity to rehearse Jesus I love you he's now in a place that he's in recovery his faith is being recovered his confidence is being recovered and he's getting ready to move now from process yes into to the fullness of the promise so Jesus now has engaged him and after we see them leave from John 21 we see their not only recovery of the relationship that Jesus has with Peter because y'all gotta remember that after Peter denied him he did not have the opportunity to make the denial right which means then that for several days Peter has to live with the guilt of denial resting in his chest he's got to live with the fact that I did what he told me I'd do but I'm so glad that Jesus did not leave him bound by the power of the mistake he gave that man a chance to come into a place to be restored and it wasn't just being restored to the place of discipleship but he restored him into sonship 
never mind. He restores him. God, I love you. He restores him now into sonship. Well, girl, where is sonship in the text? You've got to understand the Bible. Bible declared unto us that those who are chastened of God, they are loved of God. And if you be not chastened, if he can't deal with your problems, Bible said you are not a son but a bastard. So here it is while in recovery. Jesus is not just restoring a place, but he's now restoring his sonship. He's bringing him back into a place, yes, that I believe that not only now can Peter trust Jesus, but Jesus can trust Peter. I just need to find at least 75 honest people who can look at somebody and say, neighbor, I may have been through hell, but I'm glad after I went through it that Jesus can trust me now. I may have cried. They may have said some things. Oh, but there was a Romans 8, 28 in it. That thing worked for my good because not only now do I trust him, but I'm in a place that he can trust me. KJ, give me seven and we got to go. So once now, sonship has been restored and the assignment has been reiterated. Peter now has been strengthened and settled again in his faith. The man has entered into this state of recovery. He can now move from recovery into the place of practice of promise. Well, preacher, how do you figure that there's practice and promise? Well, after it is that God deals with the problem, after it is that God has gotten Peter out of his head and out of his feelings, Holy Ghost don't make me need security, but some of you will never go where God intends for you to go because you live in your head and stay in your feelings. Some of you, your greatest enemy is not the external. It's that internal. It's your inner man. It's your feelings that are getting ready to bring ruin to your potential and your purpose. Slap your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, get out of your head and get out of your feelings. Once Jesus, I'm coming. Once Jesus, y'all sit please. Once Jesus has... Um, has gotten Peter, apostle, out of his head and out of his feelings. He can trust him to bring him into the promise. Well, there's more than one promise that Peter has on his life. You'll find it when you put your ankles, I believe in Luke 24, you'll find there that Jesus begins to release promise to his disciples. He says to them um, that the time is now surely coming that I'm going to leave you again. He says to them, I'm going to leave you again, but this time when I leave, I'm not going to leave you in the earth by yourself. Unless I go, there's a promise that you can't get. He promises them that I'm going, I'm going to send you a comforter. In other words, he promises them that I'm going to leave you in person. Uh, but if you will follow my instruction, Peter, Peter, if you'll just trust me on this one, I'm going to even fulfill this which I have said. And so now that Peter understands his potential and he's been processed, he's now in a place to be trusted with the practice of promise and so this is where we see then Jesus after he's now hung out with them for 40 days post resurrection he's given them now infallible proofs that I am the one who died was buried and yet and still lives he now has positioned them in the city of Jerusalem and we find there in Acts chapter 1 and 8 another promise being released least over Peter and all of those uh, who were postured and in place to receive the word. Uh, Jesus said to them that after that mm, uh, the Holy Ghost has come. Uh, you shall receive power. Uh, you're going to have power to be my witnesses. Uh, now preacher, what is so important about this promise? Uh, well, I want to suggest to you uh, that Peter cannot make good uh, on what he heard in Luke 5 and 10 without now being endowed with power can I say to somebody tonight that there's no way you're going to experience a neck breaking year without 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 be 
praying and filled with the power the power now of the Holy Ghost will you do the preacher a favor lean over and ask your neighbor say oh neighbor I just want to know do you got Holy Ghost power I need you to wait on the answer if they answer you know look at them and say neighbor before you leave here tonight it would do you good to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost and so now they get the word Bible saying that they watch him as now he's on the cloud being taken up but because Peter has been processed and because God now knows I've got him in the place that I can trust him he's getting ready to see the power of the encounter he's getting ready to see the promise fulfilled when we put our feet in Acts chapter 2 the Bible now speaks to us and says after that the Holy Ghost indeed came or when the day of Pentecost was now fully come there were 120 in the room but there is one I want to shine a light on and that man's name is Peter this is the same Peter who met Jesus in a moment of encounter that revealed his potential this is the same Peter who's had to go through a process that addresses now his problems this is the same Peter who's on the verge now of seeing a promise manifest Peter now is in the room when suddenly a sound a sound comes from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind Peter was in the room when cloven tongues like as a fire begin to rest on them and they begin speaking the mysteries of God they begin speaking the word of God and they spoke it so much so until those who were on the outside misconstrued the chaos the chaos that appeared on the inside but I need you to put your ankles in verse 14 of the text and you'll find the same Peter who failed and faltered you'll find that Peter having now the privilege to stand and preach the gospel it is this Peter who's been filled with power who begins now to say to them I've got to bring you clarity cause we are not drunk the way that you suppose but what you're witnessing is fulfillment of a promise what you're witnessing is that which the father had left over our lives it is the same Peter who's moved from potential to now practicing in purpose who goes on preaching to them between verses 14 and 40 and he goes on to tell them that the same Jesus that you wanted nothing to do with the same Jesus that you crucified that now is the one that I stand to preach to you I need to tell somebody that as Peter is standing he's in a fulfilled promise you gotta go back now to Luke 5 and 10 Peter if you're willing take a chance on me Peter if you're willing to leave what you know Peter if you're willing to commit your way to me if you're willing to trust in me I'm gonna use you Peter to do on land what you witnessed on water stay with me in the text Peter goes on preaching until we get to verse 38 that he's preaching now to them repent and be baptized every one of you Holy Ghost I press pause I need to announce tonight that we're preaching a whole lot we're preaching houses and land we're preaching wealth and riches but we better get back to preaching repent and be baptized we better get back to preaching now repent because our days are numbered that surely the Lord he's gonna keep his word well what else did he say he said that out of nowhere I'm gonna show up again the trump of God is gonna sound the dead in Christ gonna rise and ye 
witness in Jesus departure huh? but he asked them a question huh? why stand ye here huh? why stand ye here gazing huh? this time Jesus look at your neighbor huh? and say neighbor huh? this time Jesus, huh? the same one who left us huh? before it's all over, huh? he's coming back again. Huh? Will you do the preacher a favor? Huh? Grab five people, huh? slap them a high five, huh? and say, neighbor, huh? he's coming back again. Huh? Y'all ain't talking to nobody. Huh? I said, talk to your neighbor huh? and say, hey, neighbor, huh? he's coming back again. Huh? Get your house. Huh? Get your house in order Cause he's coming back again You're chasing earthly things But I got a biblical question What does it profit What does it profit a man To gain the world To gain riches To gain wealth To gain influence To gain titles And lose your soul I believe Peter knew it Bishop So when he stood to preach I believe Peter Laid an outline for Paul I ain't standing to preach myself But whenever I stand I gotta preach Jesus I need all the preachers in the house To holler back at your girl And say I must I must preach Jesus And half of y'all silent I need all the anointed preachers To open up your mouth And say I preach Jesus huh? and so he's standing now huh? he's standing in the fulfillment huh? he's standing in the weight of his potential huh? the man now is standing in purpose huh? but there is still a promise huh? that's got to be fulfilled huh? Peter if you'll follow me huh? I'll call you to catch me huh? well where's the fulfillment of the word huh? well when you get to verse 41 hmm, huh? after Peter has preached to them huh? the Bible declared unto to us huh, that they believed his sayings huh, and all in one day huh, nets started breaking huh, in one day huh, nets were being destroyed huh, in one day huh, promise is fulfilled huh, because the bible said huh, that in that one day huh, some three thousand souls huh, got added to the church huh, why is this girl huh, that we ain't never heard of huh, I came to tell you that if you now will submit your whole life, submit your way to God, if you'll get out of your head, get out of your feelings, if you'll get back to Jesus, he's going to fulfill his promise. If he did it for Peter, he is now. I said he is now. I said he is now. He's not a respecter of person. The same way that he fulfilled the word that Peter now he left the waters breaking nets on waters and started breaking them on land what is tonight the prophetic declaration that as we preach Jesus souls are getting ready to come as we're preaching power lives are going to be transformed as we're preaching power God's going to allow us to do But y'all don't believe me But if you follow me in your book In one day We got 3,000 ads But when I get to Acts 4 Round about verse 5 After now Peter and John Have left the beautiful gate And a lame man was healed Because they were in a fulfilled promise The Bible reveals to us That they keep on now Preaching Jesus Until in one day Over 4,000 souls Got added to the church What is this girl's assignment? I came to tell somebody That if you're going To have a net breaking year That brings your family in If you're going To have a net breaking year That shifts your community If you're going To have a net that brings your co-workers you gotta get in place you gotta receive the promise the promise of power cause you can't break next if you ain't got power you can't bring them in if you ain't got power you'll have no effect if you ain't got power I just need somebody who believes for yourself that this is the year that God's getting ready to fulfill 
fulfill his promise he promised me that if you live a life before me I'll make your name great he promised me that if you yield your members you can lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover he promised me that because I believe on him greater works than those that I witness I'd be able to do because I believe on him I just came to tell you that I believe God he's getting ready to throw his weight around I just believe I believe that God he's getting ready to pour out power because we got a promise that must be fulfilled we got souls to win we got cities to influence we got regions to persuade to come to know Jesus do me one last favor lean over and tell your neighbor say oh neighbor I don't know about you but I just believe that tonight is the night that I'm gonna recover and I'm gonna get in place to receive the power to practice in the promise in other words I came to tell somebody that when you leave this year you're not leaving the same way you came God's getting ready I said God's getting ready I said God 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 I said God's getting ready he's about to wake you up he's about to equip you he's about to pour in power that everywhere you go there shall be miracles signs and wonders on your heels everywhere you go the lame will get up everywhere you go the dead will be raised everywhere you go there'll be multiplication because of the power slap your neighbor slap on my high five and say neighbor God's getting ready to fulfill his promise I'm so glad that I made it to this place that I can throw up my hands and say yes Lord again I'm so glad that I made it to this place that I can throw up my hands I can throw them up again and holler I'm yours Lord I said I'm yours I'm yours Lord Everything I got All of my objectives All of my agenda It's now about Standing in the promise When I get up in the morning I simply expect To stand in the promise When I stand and pray I'm doing nothing more Than standing in the promise Because I was in the when he released the power I was in the place when he now equipped them to move into practice and fulfill their purpose I need to tell you that for every man tonight for every woman tonight that'll throw your hands up and open up your mouth to receive a fresh feeling God's getting ready to give you a net breaking year I like to call it E320 season What's an E320 Where the Bible declare In Ephesians 3.20 Now Now unto him I said now unto him I said now I said now unto him Unto him who's able To do exceeding To do exceeding To do exceeding Look at your neighbor And say neighbor he made me a promise well what did he promise he promised that I shall do I'll do exceeding I'll do exceeding I'll do exceeding abundantly above what you ever thought what you ever imagined and it shall be not according to your pedigree it shall be not according to your academia it shall be not according to your bank account but it shall be according according to the power if you want that kind of power throw your hands up open up 
your mouth and shout, shout, shout. Half of y'all standing there looking at me. The spectators who are dismissed, but I need the people tonight who say that I believe. you talked about a lot I know you cannot experience the fulfillment of promises Bishop I love Peter because um, when he writes about it in one of the books that bears his name he doesn't just say promises but he's as precious precious promises which which to me, Bishop Weeks, and if I'm wrong, I'll stand correctly, suggests to me that Peter understood that what I'm about to move in cost somebody something. What I'm about to move in, my ability to move in the fullest of my potential, that's what we call purpose, it costs somebody something. So that which I have been privy to receive and move in was at the expense of the man Jesus Christ. Because had he not died, been buried and resurrected, he would not have snatched from Satan. Okay, never mind, never mind. We'll deal with it another day. I need you to understand um, that you cannot come into the place that promises are fulfilled without having an encounter with God. 
apostle. It was the encounter, Sea of Galilee in Luke 5, that started this thing. So if an encounter started it, it takes an encounter for it to be fulfilled. That's what we're going to do. I understand. But you got to go. I love you. The Lord bless you. Leave your offering before you exit. But understand this. Um, there are many of us who are in the room tonight. You have been bound by your failures, by the spirit of discouragement. You've been bound by insecurities. You've been limited because you've been in your own head and your feelings. I need to help you to understand that God did not lie to you. Okay, I do know Bible a little bit. I don't know it a lot, but I know it a little bit. The book of Numbers said God is not man. God did not lie to you. Look at Peter's life. After I get the promise that if you follow me, I'll make you a fisher of men. Everything went downhill, but God did not lie to him. God has not lied to you. Your feelings are deceiving you into thinking that God has canceled his word. But if I know Bible again halfway correctly, it was the prophet Isaiah who decreed and declared unto us, so shall my word be. That goes forth out of my mind. It will accomplish what I send it out to do and prosper, progress, move forward. The thing where to I sent it. God did not lie to you. I need you to understand tonight that God is getting ready in the next brief moments to release many of you from the spirit of guilt that's been hanging out over your head. He's getting ready to restore you into your place so that you can fulfill the potential that he made you aware of. You didn't even know what you were capable of until you had an encounter. And tonight for those who will be honest and say, preacher, pastor, I'm in a place that I've got to recover from the last place that I failed. I'm in a place, some of you are in a place that you need to receive this power that brings you into the practice. I don't know who you are, where you are, but I need you to hit your feet as fast as you can. If you're comfortable, you can come to the altar as quickly as you can, but we ain't got all night. I move you moving quickly, quickly. And I know you're here because I don't talk like this if you ain't here. I need you moving quickly. I need you moving quickly. Standing where you are, you can feel the altar or you can stand where you are and lift your hands. I'm getting ready to pray. Holy Ghost is getting ready to run through the room. You're coming, I see you, come on. Come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. You can't afford to stay stuck. You got too much potential to be stuck. There's a precious promise over your life. You cannot afford to stay stuck. Come quickly, please. Come quickly, please. I see hands lifted over the room, I see you. You're not coming, no problem. This is what I need you to do. I need you to be kind and lend your voice to the atmosphere. I need you to open your mouth and I want you to begin to pray and praise God as his power begins to rush this room and he begins to break fetters in the lives of those who are on this altar and even standing with hands lifted. Some of you are in the virtual sanctuary right there in your house. If you will submit yourself to the power of God, he'll restore you right where you are. He'll break the bands of guilt right where you are. You can come into your place of recovery and be filled with the power of the Holy Holy Ghost right where you are. Come on church. I need you to begin to open your mouth. Pray and praise. Open your mouth. Pray and praise. Father we thank you tonight. That you are man of your word. Father you calls us together. So that God you can bring us into a place. That we'll begin to fulfill that. Which you have promised over our lives. Father I pray now in the name of Jesus. That you release breakthrough anointing. I pray now in the name of Jesus huh? that you blow your wind in this room huh? that God you heal tonight huh? father deliver tonight huh? father restore tonight huh? release holy fire huh? all over this room tonight huh? touch your sons and your daughters huh? lift every burden huh? strengthen the feeble huh? lift the hung down head huh? in the name of Jesus huh? restore unto us huh? the joy of our salvation huh? do it tonight kind God huh? do it tonight kind God huh? do it tonight kind God huh? father I ask you now huh? touch all over this room huh? come on church we gotta work fast huh? father I thank you now huh? release your power 
need to pray in church. I thank you tonight, God, for your power. Arrest us now. Arrest us now. Restore the fire. Thank you. 
Jesus. Hey, yes, Lord. We thank you. Yes, man, so thank you. Yes, man, Sunday. Yes, God, we thank you. We thank you for the release of your power. We thank you for the release of your power. We thank you for the release of power. We thank you. Yes, Lord. We thank you. We'll walk in our purpose in the name of Jesus. We'll walk in our purpose after this night, after this encounter. We'll walk in our purpose. Thank you for this encounter. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Give him glory in this room. Somebody give him glory. Just open your mouth and say something. Just open your mouth and say something. There's a praise in your lips. Open your mouth. Give his name praise. Yes, God. Give his name glory. Yes, Lord. Come on, church. Clap your hands and give him glory. He's pouring out his spirit. He's pouring out his spirit. He's equipping us now. He's fulfilling promises right now in this moment. I dare you to clap your hands. Open up your mouth. Praise him for the promise. Praise him for the promise. Praise him for how my say. Praise him for the promise. How? How? Praise him. Come on, church. I said, praise him for the promise. I said, praise him for the promise. I said, clap your hands. Open up your mouth and give God glory. Because he's bringing us in to everything that he's saying. He's bringing us in. We shall hold it, and we shall touch it. I said he's bringing us in. Clap your hands, open up your mouth, and praise him. I said praise him. I said praise. Y'all don't believe it. Y'all don't believe it. But I need all the pastors to praise him as I echo the word of God that this shall be the year. Souls are getting ready.
that are coming out of my mouth. For many of us, I didn't say you, I said us. For many of us, this shall indeed be a net breaking year. Because we are moving in the E320 of God. Apostle, thank you for letting me come, sir. I know everybody don't praise God the same way. I get it, right? I respect it. But for the next few moments, I'm going to need those people who say I have moved from process, I have moved from recovery into promise practice. I need those people to find somebody that's moving with them. I want them to connect with that person even as I speak. I want them to take that neighbor by the hand and I want them to make this announcement. When you get the person's hand, say, neighbor, we are moving into a E320 season. Tell them I don't know the details of your promise, but tell them I do know this. This next year shall be a year of fulfilled promises. I need you to hold that neighbor's hand. I want you to put a praise in your feet and celebrate God for E320.
stay where you are, please. Lift your hands and worship. Come on. For your E320 season, God is fulfilling promises. I appreciate you, Apostle God. It's fulfilling promises. You better not give up on God. This is a season that our God, who is faithful, is fulfilling promises. Worship, come on. Exceeding, exceedingly, abundant, abundantly, above all the trouble that I ask, all I ask a thing. Exceeding, exceedingly, abundant, abundantly, above all the trouble that I ask, all I ask a thing. Exceeding, exceedingly, abundant, abundantly, above all the trouble that I ask, all I ask a thing. Exceeding, exceedingly, abundant, abundantly, above all the trouble that I ask a thing. Father, we thank you that you have ushered us into a season of fulfilled promises. Father, we thank you for revealing to us our potential. Thank you for loving us enough that you processed us, delivered us from that which was problematic, brought us into recovery, equipped us and now are seating us in the practice of promise. We give you glory. We give only your name, honor, and praise. Now, God, that which we have received as according to your word, let it be sealed in us by your spirit to the day of redemption. Father, I thank you that on the other side of this convocation, we shall witness that which eyes have not seen that which ears have not heard, even those things that have not yet even entered to the hearts and the minds of men. Father, we thank you for honoring and trusting us that you would give us a net breaking anointing that in everything we set our hands to do, we shall prosper and have good success as according to your word we give you glory we give you honor we give you thanks for it being done in jesus name i'm getting out of your way